Good morning, everyone. My name is Daniel Rogers, and you're watching Morning Musings right here on uh, Don Preston's YouTube channel. Now, this is my last day of the week to be on here. Next Monday, if everything goes well, Dr. Don K. Preston will be rejoining you right here on Morning Musings. I want to start off this video by thanking you so much for the kind comments, for the appreciation that you've shown towards me, and also to uh, Dr. Don for the opportunity and the privilege to be able to join you each day this week and talk to you about things from the Word of God. I'd like to invite you to go to my website, www.labornotinvain.com. It can be found in the, in the description below, where you can find articles, resources, audios, and videos dealing with the subject of eschatology, as well as many other uh, religious subjects as well. I host a weekly radio show on Fulfilled Radio, on Blog Talk Radio, but on the channel Fulfilled Radio, called Face to Face. All of the archives, including sermon notes, outlines, whatever else I have available, can be found at my website, labornotinvain.com, under the heading Podcast Archives. I hope that you'll check those resources out and that you will uh, join me each, each week on Fulfilled Radio uh, for the, the weekly program, Face to Face. I want to read a little section from a book. The book that I'm going to be reading from is The Resurrection of the Just and the Unjust, Future or Fulfilled. And this is the written account, uh, this is the transcripts from the formal debate between Dr. Don Preston and Dr. David Hester at Preterist Pilgrim Weekend in July of 2016. You can get this book on Amazon, and I believe you can also get it on BibleProphecy.com. If you can't get it there now, it will be available shortly. But for sure, you can get this book on Amazon and read the very first account of the debate between Dr. Don Preston and Dr. David Hester. I want to read to you from David Hester's comments on page 93 of this book. This is, his, this is in his final negative. David says, let me take just a moment before my time actually begins to commend the spirit in which this debate has been conducted thus far. I get very passionate, as you can tell, and Don gets very passionate, and I get a little bit loud. I understand some of you are doing this, and I understand that. I've seen that once or twice uh, before in my 35 to 38 years of preaching. But I tell you, when something like this is affirmed, I'm, and I'm negating it, I have to get passionate. And you're going to see some more passion tomorrow night, I'm sure from Don as well, on what the New Testament teaches. That statement also defines the character that both men uh, had in the debate just this last week in June of 2017. Both men behaved themselves very well, although they did get passionate a few times. None of the passion was ill-willed or was meant to be attack on the other individual's character. They simply wanted to defend what they see to be the truth of God's Word, and that's something that we can always appreciate. I'm also going to say that I very much appreciate and respect both men, but I'm going to, because it's obvious I respect Don, but I also respect Dr. David Hester to have the courage to stand up before a live audience. Now, some of you just think about that, if you have a fear of public speaking, how, how brave you have to be to do that anyways. He was willing to stand up before a live audience, he was willing to study, to prepare, to get ready for a debate. And he was, he was uh, willing to defend what he sees to be the truth of God's Word. I don't agree with him, but that's something that you have to respect. Not many people are willing to do that. Not many people are willing to try to come out and to, uh, to defeat what they see to be something that is contrary to the Word of God. So that's commendable. So when you're uh, watching that debate and you get frustrated with him, as I did, remember that, that he's up there doing what he sees to be uh, the right thing to do and saying the things that he th sees to be are things having to do with the Word of God. Now, uh, obviously I disagree, and I'm going to tell you a few little points about that uh, in today's mini-review of the debate. But I have an exciting announcement for you. I'm going to get the video from the Eastern Meadows Church of Christ website, and I'm going to do a play-by-play -play review and sort of commentary on the debate between Dr. David Hester and Dr. Don Preston. 
I'm going to point out uh, logical fallacies. I'm going to point out misrepresentations. I'm going to point out simple, simple things that are just untrue about what the scriptures actually teach. And I hope that you'll join me for that. Go to my Facebook page, Labor Not in Vain. I'll put that in the description as well, and you'll be able to watch that. Now here is uh, basically the debate summed up. I'm going to do David Hester's first affirmative, and I'm going to do Don Preston's first affirmative uh, as well. David Hester's first affirmative began uh, by him giving an argument. And the argument was this, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Um, I'm not adding thing to it. I'm going to get it as close as I can to the original thing. David Hester stood up and he said, The second coming of Christ is literal, physical, bodily, and visible. All right. He said the, the general resurrection takes place at the second coming of Christ. However, a literal, physical, bodily, visible coming of Christ has not happened yet. Therefore, the, the general resurrection has not happened yet. Now, several times throughout the debate, David Hester stands up, refers back to that argument, and says, uh, Don cannot disprove this. Okay? He's not even dealt with it, he said. But think about it. There's something very fishy about that little syllogism there. And what's fishy about it is he did not set out to prove his first proposition within that argument. All right? He never proved that the second coming of Jesus Christ was physical, bodily, visible, literal, whatever, whatever other words you want to throw in there. He never set out to prove that, which means that we have no reason to accept uh, those propositions and that conclusion just based off of his own authority. Why should we believe something that he says if he does not set out to prove it by Scripture? Something else that David Hester did, and, and that wasn't just a one-time thing. That happened several times through the course of the debate. He would throw up a scripture on the screen and expect us to accept whatever his interpretation was from a, a middle-class, 21st-century, white American mindset. All right. Now, Don, on the other hand, would get up and he would try, to, he would try his best to show us how that scripture, what that scripture would mean to a first-century Middle Eastern uh, Jew who grew up reading the Old Testament every single day of his life and hearing all this imagery from the Old Testament used over and over again. Another thing that David Hester did was he threw up a lot of arguments that didn't have anything to do directly with the proposition. Um, he threw up arguments about, Dave, uh, about Don's hermeneutic before Don ever stood up and even talked. This is called poisoning the well. But he also did this, made this one argument that sort of gets under my skin in a sense, and I'll tell you why in a second. He brought up 1 Corinthians 11, 26, and he said, if Don is right, then we are not to take the Lord's Supper anymore because the Bible says, as often as you do eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Now, think about this, brethren. That argument does not prove whether or not Jesus has come or hasn't come. It's talking about a consequence of that belief, or at least a perceived consequence of that belief, but it's not actually addressing the issue and the proposition, the resurrection of the just and the unjust took place in AD 70, or the resurrection of the just and the unjust is yet future. It doesn't deal with that proposition uh, exactly. It just says, this is what Don believes. Now to his audience, the, the, and his audience would be members of the Church of Christ, we take the Lord's Supper every Sunday. We believe that's... Uh, something that is important that you ought to do. So to say that argument is very shocking to them. They say, oh, how can someone not take the Lord's Supper? Well, Don doesn't believe that. All right, Don has never suggested that. But because David Hester says this, and it's not even an argument that deals directly with the proposition, it's a, it's a trick to get his audience to be turned off to Don before Don ever even steps up on the platform. You see? Now, uh, wow, it's already nine minutes. <laughs> this is why I want to do a whole, a whole hour-long thing of it. Now, Don, on the other end, he, he gave an affirmative um, in the second night of the debate, and he dealt with the uh, death of Adam. And he pulled out some quotes from the first debate from David Hester. David Hester didn't like that very much, but 
Uh, if, if David can pull from comments off the back of a book that Don had used, then certainly Don can pull from the first debate, right? Well, anyways, Don gets up and he shows that the death that Adam died was spiritual death because he died it in the day that he ate the fruit, not 900 some odd years later, okay? Now, what Don did was said, okay, if this is the death Adam died, and 1 Corinthians 15 is dealing with getting rid of the death of Adam for those in covenant, then 1 Corinthians 15 is not talking about physical, it's talking about spiritual. He also showed from Daniel chapter 12 how that would take place in AD 70. Now, here's the thing about Daniel chapter 12. It is the basis, as I've shown in the past three days, it is the basis for the resurrection of the just and the unjust passages in the New Testament. David Hester did not breathe on Acts 24, 14, 15, on John 5, 28, and 29 to, it, to any great extent, or especially on Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. All right? He ran here and here and here. He gave arguments to poison the well. He tried to talk about, uh, we believe that that the Jewish age will never end, <laughs> and, and, and all these other things, but he never actually sat down and dealt with 2 Thessalonians 1 to any extent. He never dealt with uh, Daniel 12 to any extent, he made a little quibble about the holy people and then ran away. He never dealt with Acts 24, 15 or, uh, or the death of Adam and the day that he ate the fruit. He brought in all these extra arguments that had really nothing to do with the proposition just to try to make uh, to make preterism see far-fetched, right? That's my opinion of the, of the whole debate. Um, I believe that the very best speech of the debate is the first affirmative of Don on the second night. If you can't watch any of the debate, you want to go and watch that. Now I want to do something for you folks. I want to show you how to watch the debate. A lot of you have asked. I'm on Facebook.com and I've typed in the search bar at the top, Eastern Meadows Church of Christ. Uh-oh. And now I have clicked off and gone somewhere completely different. I'm on Eastern Meadows Church of Christ. Now, when I click on their Facebook page, I can scroll down right here, and I can click on the video tab on the left side of the screen. When I scroll down just a little bit, there they are. The first debate, three hours long. The second debate, three hours, 52 minutes long. Now, a lot of that is fluff. A lot of it's just um, blank space as they're trying to get all the video equipment set up. But... Um, that's where you can find the debate. Again, I'll show it to you one more time. You go to Facebook.com, search for Eastern Meadows Church of Christ. You click on videos on the left side of the screen. You scroll down, and there it is under all videos. Both debates that you can watch uh, at any time. I hope you've enjoyed this week with me. I know that I've enjoyed it, and I can't wait to uh, uh, communicate with you all and meet some of my new friends and I continue to share in this joy that is fulfilled prophecy, the view of fulfilled prophecy. Thank you for joining me today. Hope you have a great week, and God bless. And I will see you on the flip side.